Today I am joined by Mark Patterson. He is the owner of LTS Fly Fishing UK, one of the UK's most innovative range of fly rods and fishing equipment. He grew up on the banks of Loch Lomond and came from a family of avid anglers. He works in agriculture and fishing management and we are in for a treat this evening. I'm going to get him in the speed. Hello Mark, thank you for joining me. I am. Um, tell us Mark, uh, the, the last thing that you work in agriculture and fisheries management, how long have you worked in the industry? Uh, ooh, 30 for me, yeah, we're gonna be, it'll be 31 years at the end of this year. My goodness, because because when you were a little boy, you used to fish with your, your your father and your grandfather, didn't you? My grandfather was the huge fisher, so on the Tay and, and many other places, the Tay was his, his big river that he loved. Uh, but I grew up in Loch Lomond throughout my teenage years until I was away from home. So and then went obviously away and well, I started as an electrician and I didn't like that after a few months, so. I decided uh, aquaculture was something to look in, so aquaculture, fisheries management. And did my studying down at, uh, at, at Barony College, so, and I've worked in fisheries, fishery boards, guiding on rivers, working where I am now with uh, research facilities, so for fish behaviour, so yeah, quite a, quite a range of stuff, but always around fish, they're never far away. So, so you are working. Obviously, you own LTS Fly Fishing UK. I have, but I have you, the UK and Ireland with that, yeah. Yeah, sorry. And um, so, but you also are working in research in fisheries. Yeah. So, yeah, we have two facilities there, and really just looking at the whole um, marine life, what's happening out there. We study a lot to do with fish behaviour. Yeah, the bulk of the work with salmon, which is pretty interesting, but we do a whole range of fish, uh, looking at everything you can possibly imagine. So whether it's from their eyesight to how they behave. So it's quite interesting when you take what I do and then you put that into your fishing side and My goodness. So, put things together. So can fish see? Can fish see the colour of our flies? Yes. Fish have rods and cones in their eyes, so they can see the colour, and the colour can make all the difference to being productive on a river. Really? So tell us more about that. Well, I think it's it's fairly standard how people want to work. You know, if I was going to be fishing and it's a really bright day, I'm going to be fishing brighter flies, especially when it's clear water. The peatier the water, you might want to move into a fiery brown or a claret colour. If it's going to be fishing towards night, really into the dark, you're fishing the black. And there's everybody's kind of got their own favourites for their own rivers, and everyone fishes differently. Where I am, mainly on the D, uh, we like it to be clear. We don't like it with a bit of colour or peat. The clearer the water, the better. It's, it's really a spring river. So your kind of standard colours, your black and yellows, blue, black and yellows, tend to be what I pick my fish up. But other folk would tell you different stories. They love the park shrimp or a cascade or a everybody's different and everybody's fishing trip is going to be different but there's kind of things that i would work with that for me anyway that i find are what make things productive so i have a when i arrive at a river i know roughly what i want to do just by having a look at it so 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 because you because you have fished around the world and you fished in some really seriously beautiful beautiful places um, quite lucky. You have, um, and we're going to talk about more about that as well. But the going back to obviously the fact that fish can see, does the size of the fly make a difference as well? Then, of course, that's um, they're cold blooded animals, so you have in the eye you have photo shoots per second, so the colder the water the less photo shoots per second the eye holds. So then you want to be looking at fishing bigger flies. The warmer the water, 
the more photo shoots per second in the eye. So, you, and again on the D, I mean, fish have incredible eyesight anyway. And, you know, here we can use extremely small flies. Uh, and so do they, in Iceland, you know, they'll fish down into 20s. Uh, but here, I, you know, we'll fish down into, you know, 12, 16, 18s even. So, yeah, I think it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, and that's not to say there's no rules to fishing. That's not to say that you can't put a sun ray or, or something and strip them. And fish are very inquisitive. You know, when they are generally inquisitive. So when things are there, they, they want to know what it is. You know, they'll often follow a fly and not do anything about it. And especially when they're fresh, when fish are fresh entering into a river, they've been hunters, they've been predators at sea. And it's, you know, the hormones can come into the body and then they'll start to rest out in pools and they'll have no interest to anything. They just stay. And that's where you get your resident fish. And then as the hormones rise a bit, the males will start to move around a bit as the season goes on, they'll go up and down the river. So things change all the time and, and your tactics, how you're going to fish for these fish change. But for me, uh, my what I really love to target is fishing cold waters and you know spring fish. And generally, once the spring's here, I love to move away to Norway. And it's just like, it's not my second home. And I have great friends there, and I just love it. Oh, and and we're, we're also very lucky to have a lot of Norwegian, Scandinavian cu cu customers coming over to Scotland yeah. to yeah. fish as well, which uh, where it, it's, I just love the way um, they fish. And when they come to the D and how they fish, it's it's completely different to everybody else and it's it's just brilliant just to watch them yeah all, all the big rivers here will have a lot of scandinavian it's a short season so mm. it's an opportunity for them to be in around some big silver fish early on before their own rivers are open so um but there's nothing nicer for me than summer months being on big rivers in norway and and sitting with some really great company so that's what makes it for me when we were we were chatting the other day, you you were mentioning about the fact that um, when fish come, fish um, travel in families, and yep. um, this was something that I, I was reading about a, a couple of years ago from the college in Inverness. And um, just explain a little bit more for people that might not know about this. Genetics, simply. Um... What we do know in red beds, there's quite often you'll have an overpopulation of uh, of fish spawning, hen fish. With uh, you might say we have a gravel bed. One year you might have uh, one hen and a male or two males, and she can complete that. She can fulfil that uh, with all the the eggs and fry that she needs in that area. And you can have an over spawning and when there's an over spawning they often quite fight with each other and it can deplete numbers rather than improve them but it's a ballpark figure but a lot of these fish when they smoke they will go out to sea together they'll feed together and they'll come back together and and there's probably many an angler out there that will tell you a story that somewhere behind the same lie in the same pool one fish after the other they've taken two fish that look identical and that is but we do have stray fish you know, it's not all, it's not like all salmon that from the D will run the D, and all salmon from the Tweed run the, the Tweed. There's the bulk of them do, but there's fish will also follow other pods of fish when there's big numbers, and they will sometimes enter into other rivers. And when they're when they're fresh fish, again being hunters, when the hormones rise in the body, their taste and smell become far more acute. So quite often after a certain period of time they will leave that river and head out towards their own river. So it's uh, it's quite, it, it's, I would think there's probably something around 30 to 50% will actually make it back to their tributary from where they started off. That could change every year depending on water flows. Sorry, I am just moving in and out. And the only anybody watching this, when people are watching this, is because to get your volume higher. So I apologize, Mark, if you're there thinking, oh, she's disappeared. I am still here watching. That's all right. <laughs> Don't think I'm I've gone. No, um, that's all right. So you the 
I've been watching LTS and um, I love the fact that um, obviously you, you're up on the D and the, the work that you do to, to really give something back to our sport and, uh, and obviously Martin on Little Black Hall and uh, in Chamalo. Um, I've got a lovely photo. Talk us through a little bit about the, the kind of things that LTS do to give something back. And I'm just going to put this photo up. Okay. Yeah, that was last year. That was a nice um, kids' day that we did. It was great. We had two salmon that day as well. So there was some really, really happy kids. So that was good fun. And we had the, the fishery board behind us to help us with that as well. So, but yeah, we've got Martin there, obviously, on Inch Marlow Black Hall. And we've also got Terry further up the river. So these guys are great. Yeah. Um, They've been, Terry's been around for so many years as well. Lots of guys know who he is. He's a charismatic guy and uh, we all love him. So he's great as well. Yeah. So but we have we have people everywhere. You know, we have Glenda over in Ireland. She's probably one of the most qualified women instructors, if not the most qualified. She's fantastic. She's dead professional with everything she does. Love her to bits. I just can't thank her enough for the work she does. You know, we've got Gary Scott, uh, you know, he has so many of his clients and the work that he does, and he's just fantastic. And, you know, we've got so many different people. And uh, like Lucinda, she's great mm -hmm. as well. She, I think she's here next week um, fishing with me. And, and they're all very different in what they do. And I, I don't get involved with what they do. I leave them to do their, their own thing they, and how they promote or whatever they want to do. It's, uh, but I'm behind them very much for, for all their work. So, and I really appreciate that what they all do as well. It's good. And, and obviously with Gary Scott, the legend that is Gary Scott, he's, he goes out to Norway and, yep. and teaching young, young people who are going, uh, going into fishing as a, as a, a business, aren't they? As the industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Gary's great. Uh, in fact, we're fishing in Norway together at the end of next month he's coming out with me um so just to get away from it all you know a few yeah. days out there uh, so that'll be nice out in Suldal heading to the river there quite a big river so yeah a few days fun but um yeah as I say we have all the different people doing all their different things and it's great and you know without their help we couldn't be where we are and I think as a brand we've just expanded and expanded and, mm -hmm. and not just here in the UK and Ireland I think Globally, mm. it's, uh, our products have just got better and better. And Trond is so good at developing the rods. Uh, you know, we can all sit down and talk. Everyone has a wee input in what we do. Um, next year is looking really, really exciting for us. It's just going to get better. So we'll have, there's another new rod coming on. I wouldn't say too much about it, but it's, it's really exciting. And uh, another step forward, which Sometimes you think, where can they really go? But it's amazing that, that things do just keep moving on in generations. Yeah. We've got new clothing will come out for next year that we're working on just now. So we've got lots of new stuff, new reels. We've got, yeah, it's great. And and you are like the the people that you have around you, and the people that that I know in the UK, like Ali Hutchins, yeah. um, obviously Gary Scott, Glenda Powell, and to name but three. And um, these people, in their own right, are, are either world champions or um, obviously with Ali Hutchins. I know he does loads of introduction in the Central Belt and the Far North, and one of one of the nicest people you could meet in the industry. Ali, Ali's great. Ali's just up here all the time and he's great fun. In fact, he was here last week and that's the first time I've seen him since before lockdown. So uh, we had the day up at Balmoral, which was fantastic uh, with David up there. So that was that was good fun and great to see him again. Um, but yeah, Ali has just been, he's been like my, my wingman, you know, ever since we've had this for, I think, about four years now we've been doing it. And he's just been great. So he's good fun. Yeah, he's a lovely gentleman. Yeah. He's one of the gentlemen of our sports. And I'm he's, he's done all the shows with me that we've done, and, and they're just they're great fun, you know, and seeing everyone. So yeah, he's well, I'm fun. hoping to get him on alive as well. So, uh, but <laughs> you're talking about the rods, um, obviously how they're designed and they're put together, um, and the one thing I was I've like been reading up about you that 
you know, how you have designed the rods, that, you know, they've got to be able to be formed in not only the water, but also the wind as well. Um, tell us a little bit about your range, because I know you've got double, single, and you've got your switch rods. Just just talk yeah, we've, got, we've, got, we've got a wide range of rods. We've got predator rods. We've got saltwater rods. We've got... You know, the switch rod's been an incredibly popular rod, actually, between Ireland and a lot of guys. Um, it's It's been loved. It's incredible what we can get rid of with those. But I think one, one of the nice things, whether it's double-handed, single-handed, what we love and what a lot of fishermen love about our rods is just how responsive they are when they're in your hands. You know, it's not just about trying to cast a long line. It's, it's a rod designed for fishermen, so they can really feel... And that's the thing, I think when people pick them up, when they get the opportunity, that's the Slingshot 3, that's our, uh, one of our new rods from this year. So, yeah, I think people just really love to be able to get them in their hands and give them a go. And, and it's, it's proved itself, the rods sell themselves, it doesn't need me to do it, uh, it just needs people to try them and uh, they seem to really love them, so it's been great. And also, as well as that, I know that you've got the rods in Glasgow Angling Centre yeah. um, where people can go and try them. Yeah. Um, super place to just because obviously they've got the pool next out right outside the door and they've got their open weekends and hugely helpful staff as well um just one of the the, the brilliant places in scotland yeah. to go and try isn't yeah, it yeah it is. it's great and you know obviously holds these as you say the open weekends and they're good and, and it's great fun just being with all the different companies and, and you know the stories from all the guys where they've been over the last year and things and you know the last one we did down there, I was sitting with Jim Curry and talking about, you know, his trips in the jungle and the things he's been doing. And he's great fun, you know. And and I think that's every fisherman has their own stories to tell and where they've been and what they do. Um, and I think the longer you do it, the more you have. You know, for me, I remember being a young lad and I think I'd probably my first years as a guide on the river. And my grandpa always saying to me, he, he was 97 when he passed, and he used to sit in the riverbank and watch me fish. And he used to say, it's just a lifelong learning. You'll never learn it all. You'll never know it all. It's it just, you can absorb in different people you speak to. Anywhere you go and somebody and their, how they've gone about their methods or their different things. And that's what's nice about sport. It's not, you don't go into something and learn how to do it and that's it. You just all the time you're picking up and, and learning. And and I was very lucky on the, the beat I was on, uh, the two beats I was on, that I had a lot of fishers and that's probably where my Scandinavian connection came in because I had a lot of guys that were coming over and, you know, great guys, Mikael Fredin, a uh, great friend of mine, Arnie Viste, an absolute fantastic fisher. If you take fish out of a pond, you know, it just, you know, have it out of a pond, you have it anywhere, he's just incredible. And these guys, there's a lot, even for me, it doesn't matter what stage I am, a lot for me to learn. You know, in different rivers, different places you go, you're always learning something new. And that is a lovely thing in the sport. So it, it really is, and it's it's just it's just the, the beauty of our sport as well. Because I always say if you if you don't learn something new and if you're not open to learning, you're never gonna progress, are you really? No. No, you've always got to be I, I, you know it's funny when I used to give a bit of tuition and things, and golf is, is something, you know, people when they get into a low handicap, they want to be able to tweak and get a little bit better. A lot of guys want to pick a fishing rod up the first few times, I think that's it. But you know, even I spend, when I have the time, I don't have so much of it now, but I used to spend a lot of time in the river, just, you know, training a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. not wanting to really be in competitions or anything, but just improving what you're doing. Uh, and, and everybody should take that time. You know, you arrive at rivers that may be in flood or it's bright sunshine, mm -hmm. you know, low. Muck about with some different rods, have a play, try different things, you know, make the best of the time that you've got there. It's not always, certainly for me now, is when I was younger, I used to be hungry to catch a lot of fish. I've had some incredible years. Um, but now it's, it's about spending time in beautiful places with just some great guys. Uh, and you know taking that time out to relax away from everything else and and I think that is for me the key in the sport is is my surroundings mm -hmm. I mean last year 
we had a group of 10 of us, I think there was half a dozen from here, and friends from Norway, and we were in Vefsna, which was its first year, which was just incredible. Uh, you know, I fished in rivers like Laxelva, Namsen, some really big, beautiful rivers, and uh, I, that's fantastic, you know. Um, and I probably, probably because I'm too busy, I should probably spend a bit more time travelling around and down to the Tweed. I don't often get the opportunity. Um, I've spent the last few years, I've fished a little bit more on the Spey, mm. which has been nice as well. I love it up there. It's a cracking part of the Scottish countryside, so it's lovely and it's a, a, a nice big river. I like I like bigger waters. Some folk love these smaller rivers and, uh, you know, that's great. I get, I get the whole thing with that, you know, single hand and switch rods. But for me, I love to build a big line out and, you know, push through and wade through some nice dangerous water. It's good. <laughs> well, you are a boy from the Tay, and uh, I, I adore the Tay, uh, and uh, just the size of it. I'm going to share. I'm going to pop a photo up of you playing a fish. It's on Carthel, isn't it? Um, and yep. uh, talk us through this. That fish. Uh, that, that was an air. That was a March fish, I think, if I remember rightly. That's um, Billy, who is just great fun. Those those two gillies are. As professional as they come, uh, they really know their stuff. They make your day just an absolute dream. The stories and everything they tell is just brilliant. And actually, when I, I hooked this fish, was down towards the bridge, and uh, it took quite a soft take and turned away and I lifted it. It's great. So I'm speaking away to Billy and playing the fish in about 20 seconds and it dropped off. So, ah, so anyway, cast back out. Same, just exactly the same line, same bit, straight round, and it's back. Billy's the same fish, which is really unusual to to take one that's been hooked as as long and as well as it was. So anyway, playing it up, thinking nothing of it, and then it just took off. <laughs> and Billy said, "Right now we've got a fish." So anyway, that was us. We just kind of got into the the croy there for landing it. So that was me trying to get its head up for the the net. Well, the reason I kept that photo on for so long is because you can actually see the fish and you can just see, uh, obviously, just the side of it and you realise how big a fish that was. Typical Tay fish. Yeah, yeah. It's the Tay, and again, look at this year, it's been fantastic. There's been some really nice quality fish coming off and it's lovely to see. And it, it's great because... You know, I see a lot of the guys in Ireland have got some really fantastic young, hungry guys out there. They're like I was when I was young. They're fishing all the time. One of them, uh, Simon Hartness, he, I think it was at Seven Fish he had uh, on Saturday. So that's pretty good going. So it's, um, but, you know, to watch these guys and watch these rivers that are doing so well. Uh, I was actually just on a call to Norway earlier today and they're looking at some of their rivers having record years. And this just brings the sport, you know, where people, people get up and down very quickly. They see the rivers and it's all very pessimistic and then all of a sudden it's it's great again. Um, and, and that is the way this sport, I've seen this a few times. You know, I've seen the D when it's been right down and I've seen the D when it's been right up and, and that happens all over the place. So we'll be there again and we'll be back in great fishing again. But this year, while it's there and... Um, People have been locked up. It's been a very strange year, so it's great to see they can get out and actually get some great sport as well. So it's good. And and I know that during lockdown, um, a lot of people have actually bought fishing rods, which has been great yeah. for the sport. So I think it's now that uh, if you've gone and brought a new fishing rod, it's like get yourself out there and go and catch a fish with it. Yeah, I think at the early stage, people were just ground at home, and um, one of the actually. On that subject, and it's, it's something I would love to mention, and and I think he he needs all the credit in the world to him as Willie Dara, where he did this with the uh, so angling against COVID nineteen, and there was so much fishing equipment that people donated, flies, rods, reels, everything else, uh, and um, it's just incredible to see the anglers around the UK pulling in such a phenomenal amount of money, so. I had put in a, a reel and a rod um, in the early days of that, so it was nice to see them. And it's, I really, I have to take my hat off to Willie. It must have been so much work for him 
and uh, just he's been absolutely incredible. So well done to him, and well done to all the anglers who put money in to to fight this with the NHS, and well done to them all. Yeah, and I, I totally agree there because uh, we were contacted at Fish Ballot and uh, we went and, and added. And, and I know that um, somebody actually won a voucher, I think it's from when we did a Glasgow Angling event. And they said, oh, can we put that in there? I was like, oh, yeah, not a problem. And the same guy who'd actually got the, the original voucher that we put in actually won the second one that this guy had put in with a day's guiding with him. I was like, God, there was some fabulous, yeah. fabulous it, thing. It was incredible. Just everybody pulled together. And but I think that it was great for everyone. She kept an interest, you know, throughout. So people were watching all the time what was there. And uh, I mean, I threw quite a lot of money in, attempting a few. I know I won it, I think. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's good fun, you know. But it was really tough as well. And and I, I was doing the daily lives. And, and, and I, I remember somebody saying to me, you've become my new best friend with Alexa. And and, I, and the reason I did the daily lives was because I was worried about people's mental health. And, yeah. uh, and people now think I drink a lot of tea, which I do. But um, I was I was so I was worried about people because um, People were just having, they only go fishing, and they were literally just had a, the rug pulled from underneath them, hadn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was in all aspects of life. But, yeah, it was. And yeah. I think people found that quite hard. I was very lucky, actually. I was with um, one of my really good friends, and, and I love fishing with him, Stuart Foxhall. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we were lucky. We had um, a day on here on the D with Martin, which was just fantastic. And we had a day up in Delfer. And, and of course... Um, at the time we were with Martin, I think uh, Ante from Chasing Silver was there, and but they had to get on a plane and go home. That was them being pulled. So it was a day or two after. So we were quite lucky. We had to, managed to get a day or two in the early spring before that happened. So yeah. it's good. And a, and a big shout out to Chasing Silver as well because we we yeah. promote them at Fish Pal. Um, I love that magazine. And, it's great. And yeah. Fabulous work, what, what he does. You've actually written a few articles for Tracy Silver, haven't you? I have written a couple of articles for them, yeah. So, about one them. of them that was, uh, again, similar. I, I wrote one on uh, around fish behaviour, tactics to fish behaviour. So, it's one that people want to find it, they can go back home and read it. Auntie loved it. He just he came to me and he said, oh, Wow, this is great. So I don't often have the time for doing things. It's not really my thing to do either, but it was kind of putting what I do is my work, uh, at, you know, and my fishing kind of together. It's kind of niche, I suppose, to, to work in the side of what I do and be a fisherman. And um, either people are maybe biologists or science, and but I kind of run all the facilities that are there. So it's, it was amalgamating everything together into to a, a story, you know, so which was quite nice. So. You are one of our hidden gems of the guest you are, you know. Um, we were chat when we were chatting, we were talking about um, basically uh, pectoral fins, pectoral fins, yeah. like sea trout and also yeah. salmon. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny. Well, the story, it was actually Duncan Egan uh, years ago was fishing with me and I was telling them this story about the fundamental difference between a salmon and a sea trout. And it's simple that a salmon's pectoral fins are tilted and a sea trout's are flat. So a salmon will use very smooth water, maybe perhaps in between say two stones or they might be in front of a big stone, but water has a very rough pattern and fish will lie where it is very smooth. And that means they can rest without having to use any energy. So I was telling them the story, and obviously trout's different, that they'll lie in behind stones and they'll use bankside vegetation, feed mid water surface. And salmon will lie on the edge of these stones. You will never see them in dead water behind. It's all so you can, and it's quite an interesting part when you're actually fishing. So when I'm looking at these riffles and, and stones and pools, is addressing your fly at the speed and the way you want that fly line to come across them. Where do you expect that salmon to sit? 
when you know where to expect them to sit and you can address your fly, you will have more chance of catching more fish. Do you know, and, and, and this is why um, you, because of your depth of knowledge, obviously you own LTS Fly Fishing UK and Ireland, um, but, but also as well is the fact that you have been in fisheries management at a very high level um, for quite a few years. Um, it just having the the brand, the, the you know the rods, and what you do, it's just perfect when you're designing rods, isn't it? Because you understand a lot more about a fish than uh, most of us. I mean, most of our rod design was all down to Tron. Really, he's he's the one that puts most of the stamps, and he is really quite incredible. Uh, I really do think that we have some of the very best rods that are out there. And I'm sure there's a lot of folk that agree with that that are fishing with them now. Um, the explosive rod was just fantastic for us. It's been a, a big, big seller. People love it. Um, I've got guys all over the country that are fishing with them now. And same in Ireland, from the 12.6 to 14.6. The slingshot's taken off. It's been great. Say it next year's really exciting. We've got some really nice stuff coming. Uh, so I think we're all looking forward to that. And I would imagine probably our very best reel will come next year as well. So we've, we've improved and improved as time has gone on. And and I I was actually back with LTS right back at the beginning when the company was founded. Um, so it used to obviously be part of Loop back then and, and many years ago they were separated. But uh, So I was involved back right at the beginning of the company. Uh, so I've watched it for all these years kind of grow and change and expand. Um, and the owner himself, uh, Leif, he's just, he's a lovely guy. He's as straight as the day's long. Uh, I can chat to him all the time and he's, he's very interesting and he's great. He's a great businessman. And, you know, he, he always looks to the future of where we're going to go with things. And it's, it's great. So, I was actually going to introduce the reels because yeah. I absolutely love your reels. Yeah. Um, and, and Talk us through your range of reels, because because obviously there's another one here as well. That's, yeah, that's that's actually more to fit. That one's to fit into people's budget. It's been great actually. Um, that's the the new dynamic reel, so it's really fantastic. Um, I've in fact some of the gillies have worked with me. I've given them all these now, and yeah, they love it. So we've we've had the the Vosler, We had him make some reels for us there, which have been beautiful. And but um, yeah, we have a new reel which I'm not going to talk too much about. We'll we'll put it out there when we're ready. Uh, but it's looking really exciting for us. So can I can I go to that Bosler? The so you've actually had to make some reels for you. Yeah, yeah. He he's made our last batch of reels for us. Yeah. Because so, limited numbers, but they're they are yeah. Because those are the ones that I know some of the AAP guy boys, when they pass their casting exams, they actually had some, their own engraved reels. Yeah, well, we've, we've changed a lot of things. We just got him to machine them and make them. So they're German made, which, and they are, they're lovely, they're beautiful. So, <laughs> but they're limited, and I only even got one myself, so. <laughs> oh, you need to, you need to spoil yourself and get yourself so, Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, anyone that got one was lucky. Well, you fished all over the world and and obviously you know dream destinations that that we've talked about and as as far as australia what were you doing in australia my parents live there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm quite uh, quite lucky so i can go out there and dabble around and i've actually got a, a guy uh, it's funny because i've been i've started looking into boats in the area because I quite fancied having a go at some marlin and looked at boats in the area and I found this guy and, and um, he ended up, his wife had sold the house to my mum and dad, so they already knew him, so I, I ended up, I had a couple of days out there and I never got my marlin actually, but we did get some really great fish and, and, and then even some of these smaller fish in Australia, you know, the parrot fish and all these, they're just beautiful to catch, they're lovely, so very different. So, oh. and my sister's in Phuket, so, you know, I can <laughs> go out there. I take, every, everywhere I go, I take a fly rod. So. 
I don't blame you. And the other thing as well is, is that I, when I was, I was fishing the Tweed on Saturday and Middle Pavilion, and I was fishing a switch rod, um, switch rods, they, they, they've got to be um, something anglers need in their arsenal, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I think for these medium rivers, if, like a lot of guys, obviously people are traveling a lot more around the world. Than even we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Argentina has become a great, you know, destination. Uh, you know, Canada and, and a lot of these guys love using switch rods. Um, and, and our original switch rod has just been incredible. Um, and, you know, the people that have been going out, taking them to these, the guides get hold of them out in these destinations and they say, what's this? It's incredible. This is brilliant. So that's a good friend of mine, Freda. Uh, that was on, that's on the D here, so just putting a nice bend in one of the rods. All our rods are a full deep action rod, you know, they, they, everything delivers from them, so they're, they're great to fish with. So. Yeah, and, and also as well as that, the, the people that you've got around you that are obviously giving the input and helping with the design, etc. You've got you've got some of the world's best people involved with you. Yeah, we, we have. We've got some great people. But, you know, it doesn't matter uh, what brand it is. And without being talking about LTS, uh, you know, all the brands, there's there's great guys in all of them. And they're all great to talk to. You know, Scott McKenzie on the shows with him, he's just great fun. All these guys, you know, Jim Curry, I, I love catching up with them when we see them because I don't often see them around riverbanks. So it tends to be the shows. And, and it's been a bit different this year that uh, obviously... We haven't been able to do these and um, but i'm sure things will hopefully change back to normal uh, one thing we will do is when when we kind of get the green light to do it is we will do another kids day um and i'll also do uh, another competition for some fishing here on the d as well and um, when we get the chance we'll speak with martin about that and we'll we'll offer up some more fishing so look out for look out for us doing a competition for a couple of rounds for a couple of days so. Oh, well, Martin on the day, uh, Martin Robson is such a lovely, lovely young man. He, he's great, and all his guests that are there, they just love him. He, he will take you, and he's so enthusiastic, stone by stone, where are you going to get your fish? He's just brilliant. He's uh, delighted to have him. He's been absolutely brilliant for the whole team. Yeah, and, and the whole of uh, the beat and where you stay, it's an absolute treat to go and stay not only to have Martin guide you, but also to go and actually stay at uh, Arnie's Beat, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. So, well, I mean, this is, I've taken on a, a new house here, so it's been doing this up. You can see the fishing themes going on with the, the um, rooms and things. So, Well, the, all I can say is a huge thank you. And do you know something? The I always say the guys that are at the top of the game um, and... You guys are so understated. The likes of Scott McKenzie, you've mentioned Scott, you've mentioned Jim Curry, who we had on last week. And when when you actually start saying, and you did this and you did the other, you can see the embarrassment in your face. Um, because and, and you're the same, Jim Curry was the same last week, um, Ian Gordon's the same, you know, Scott McKenzie, Charles Jardine, everybody is. They're and, all, you know, it's all I say, all these guys, we're all great guys. It's, we're not used to sitting in front of doing things like this. We're used to being on a riverbank. And... <laughs> well, I'm just grateful. And everybody here today uh, watching this is hugely grateful. And um, just to get an insight into Mark Patterson, because uh, Mark Patterson, the gentleman who works in fisheries management, but also is the director owner of LTS Fly Fishing UK and Ireland. Um, Huge thank you. Thank you so much for today. You're very welcome. <laughs> and um, and um, we're hoping to get a couple. Now, I know before you go, you've got a new website coming, haven't you? Yeah, that is. And we'll do a great launch of that soon. So it's been worked on all the time just now. And it's much better, bigger. And uh, yeah, there'll be lots of new different items and things going on in there so that will be under .co.uk so it'll be lts-flyfishing.co.uk um, within the next week or two we'll be launching that as well 
and we'll put a, a ticker tape along that. And also as well as if people want to go and try your rods, obviously go and see Martin Robson. Um, yeah. Glasgow Angling, where else? We've got, well, I mean, what, the bulk of stuff we do is we do it with the guides and the, and the pros on the river. You know, I leave this down to them. So, you know, Glenda has always taken folk out and, you know, she's got stuff there introducing them. We have other shops. We've got shops in Ireland as well. We've got Barney there at the moment. We've got, you know, people can come to me. We like to do a lot of things on a personal basis. I don't want somebody just to buy something and I want them to be really happy with what they end up with. You know, it's a lot of money to be spending and it's not, you don't want to be, some of us spend so much, it's ridiculous. But, you know, people maybe only buy one or two rods and they want to get that right. So I would suggest that if they get the chance, they go along to these people. You know, with Martin here, if there's a particular rod and his guest, it takes me five minutes to drop it off, they can go and try them, you know. And again, this competition, somebody will lucky will put a whole range of rods out and folk can come along and test stuff for themselves. And, and I say, word of mouth is the best thing with this. Um, you know, people talking about what they've tried and what they've got and, and you know, get out, try them for yourself. Um, if you see me around or people want to try something, they're very welcome to phone me up, you know, or email me and, you know, we can have a chat and try and help them out with whatever we can. And also drop into Glasgow Angling Centre because... Drop into Glasgow Angling, they've got rods there, go and try them. Definitely, and they've got a lovely casting pool and they're all open. And don't forget everybody, tackle shops are now open and please... Yep support your local tackle shop because um, the tackle shops need everybody to uh, be supporting them now and also as well as go and support your local ghillie because i tell you you know that if you if you if you want somewhere to fish go and fish with martin because seriously lovely man uh, yeah i've got some other young guys coming up and you'll see them in the next few while that'll be popping up they've been impressing me a lot over the last while uh, young and hungry so there'll be some some new guys coming on as well and also, don't forget, if you're going to fish the D, don't forget to fish with Terry Clayton as well, because I would hate Terry to be upset that I hadn't mentioned his name. <laughs> oh, and no, Terry. Nobody can forget Terry. Terry. No, and, of, and of course, um, Ali Hutchings, he's got water on the spay. Has, oh. yep. If, you know, people want to get up there. He, the water he has for sea trout especially is fantastic. So be in touch with him if you're looking at trying to book something. Now's a good time. Mm -hmm. So get in touch with Ali Hutchings. And last year, Japanese TV just filmed his beat aerially for a promotion yeah. they were using out in Japan. Um, and then you've also got um, the lovely Glenda, who's also got a beat and water down in a southern island, who's absolutely yeah. just one of the loveliest ladies. And you've yeah. got Lucinda. She is involved in Bishop Auckland and District Angling Club, yeah. which has water on the river. She's Wheel. great. She's got her stage one. She's very eager. She's she's just coming up better and better all the time. So no, she's she's brilliant and she's great fun. I'm sure if anybody wanted to get out and get lessons down there with her, then I'm sure they would have a great time there as well. So yeah, so, look forward to seeing the new website. I've had a peek. I've had a peek of it the last yeah. couple. Of days. I'm excited, and I know everybody watching this is going to absolutely love it. So well done, because there's been a lot of work gone into that, and I know how much work goes into building websites with the fish pal one. <laughs> the right foot behind you. It's not all down to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you take care, Mark, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks okay. so much for today. You're very welcome. Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Cheers.